It's a big day today for OLED fans as we finally have a native glossy coating option for W OLED monitors. This is the XG27 AQ DMG, and unlike a lot of the OLED launches we've seen, this one doesn't come in at $1,000. This comes in priced officially at $749 US with a special launch price of $699. It's not 480 hertz. This is 27 inch 1440p 240. This is essentially a glossy version of the matte PG27 AQ DM that we saw last year. We've got some important changes and improvements though, including a new anti flicker mode, but the biggest change is obviously the factory glossy coating. See, until now, our options for comparing glossy versus matte and monitor sizes has been really limited. That's why the conversation always seems to revolve around the semi-gloss coatings of QD OLED versus the matte coatings of W OLED. Those are different OLED technologies, each with their own pros and cons outside of the coating, not an ideal comparison. And I do make the specific distinction of factory glossy coating because we're finally starting to see some units from Doe out in the wild. Looking at their own production video, their Spectrum W OLED looks like it uses a Gorilla Glass sheet applied over the factory matte coating. Which, what? Whereas Asus worked directly with LG to produce these monitors. It's also worth pointing out that the Doe Spectrum goes for 1099 over at B&H and the stand, which is not included, will get you for an additional 100 bucks. So I personally don't see it as a contender here. Based on the amount of hate and extreme adjectives I've seen levied towards matte coated W OLED, I fully expected to be blown away by this glossy panel. I expected a night and day difference. Set side by side, I started in a completely dark room and I balanced these panels for brightness. My first instinct as a reviewer was to sit really close to these and pixel peep looking for differences and I didn't see anything. Not in an animated wallpaper, not in a full white background, not in a full black background, and not in game rendering. But then I sat back a bit to where I'd be if I were actually using the monitor and the difference became noticeable. It didn't hit me all at once. I noticed one little area where there was increased detail and I just kept pulling the thread. I'd be like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at the detail on that tree, right? And I just kept going from there. Glossy coating just does make the image look sharper and more detailed. Then I increased the ambient light in the room to a decent amount of light and the black levels, and in turn the contrast, stayed better on the glossy version. Now to make sure this wasn't just placebo, I asked Danielle to come over here and look at these two side by side. And without me providing any input at all, she immediately picked out the glossy as being more detailed and having a sharper image and she picked out the fact that the blacks looked deeper on the glossy version. She didn't second guess herself or go back and forth. She called it straight up immediately. It shows up best when you have a scene with a lot of small details because all those really small details being sharp adds up to a whole frame that looks a lot sharper. You can see it here on the writing on the trash can, the softness on the arrows, the detail on the box. All this is shot in focus too because you can see the sub pixels. I spent a lot of time trying to get this right. The blue sign in the background, the check pattern on the guy's coat. It's really obvious on the wood grain of the floorboards. This panel in particular, you can do this all day. Look at the waypoint marker. There is a trade-off to this, and that's the reflections on this monitor. They're brutal. They're mirror image. You need to have this in a lighting controlled environment, or you're going to have a bad time, preferably away from any windows. So now, after having seen this with my own eyes, do I feel like matte coating ruins the OLED experience? No, I definitely don't. I think that's way too exaggerated. There's a reason why I cover so much OLED on the channel, because out of the panels that have released in the past year, the worst OLED I've seen performs wildly better in terms of image quality than any other competing monitor. Tech. Assuming you can mitigate the reflections, there's simply no denying that Glossy provides a better, sharper image and does a better job of retaining black levels. And not just in trying to nail down examples for a review video like this, it's the most obvious when you're using the monitor like you would normally use a monitor. It's hard for me to quantify this numerically. Like, is it 15% better? Is it 20% better? You can look at the side by side and decide how important this is for you. If you currently own a matte OLED, though I think you should run out and buy a Glossy OLED instead, no, I don't. Okay, so what about glossy W OLED next to a semi-gloss QD OLED? The answer is in a super dim or totally dark room, it's a lot closer a lot. Like, I don't think there's a meaningful difference between the two. But one of the things you've probably seen about QD OLED is that when there's a high level of ambient light in the room, the blacks turn more of a purple, whereas W OLED stays black. It's usually demonstrated in review videos with super dark scenes or with monitors displaying a pure black image. But what's the impact in a real world gaming scenario? Well, when you lose black levels, you lose contrast, and contrast provides depth and detail to the image. The setup you're seeing right now is getting blasted with light. Look at the differences in the detail of the wood planks, the sides of the hay bales, this pole Post, the tire, the QD OLED is giving richer, warmer colors, but the W OLED side is giving more detail. The planks on the ground here are more detailed and you can really see the texture behind the letters and the bar sign. And this big bright area is more controlled on the W OLED side, 
but it's a darker image overall. These two are so close but different for me. I think you could just pick which one you like more. Like you might prefer the warmer, richer, brighter image of the QD OLED over the detail of the W OLED. Now, sadly, the subpixel layout here is not the new RGWB layout from the LG dual mode 32 inch we just looked at. This is still using the previous RWBG layout. The biggest impact this has is on text clarity, which can still be a legitimate issue for people at 27 inch 1440p because we just don't have the pixel density that we get with 4K. This monitor has a feature to combat the fringing we see on the edges of text called clear pixel edge, and I'm not a fan of what this does. It attempts to make the edges softer, and for me, in almost every example, makes the text itself harder to read. It almost looks like the difference between a bold and a regular font, but whether in light or dark mode, it makes it blurrier. I would run with this off. Glossy versus matte doesn't have too much impact here, the main thing being that the contrast being better on the glossy version makes the text that much easier to read. Comparing it to the QD OLED from a normal viewing distance, how you would use your monitor, I prefer QD OLED in dark mode. In light mode, it's a toss up for me because I either get the green and purple shimmery effect on the QD OLED side, or I get the rough looking edges on the W OLED side. Variable refresh rate flicker or VRR flicker is another issue that's becoming talked about a lot more lately. Ratings.com just did a great video on this. It has a lot to do with one, how variable refresh rate is implemented in the monitor, two, your actual hardware because larger swings and refresh rates seem to cause more flicker, and three, how sensitive you are to it. I test for it in two ways. One is just playing the handful of games I use to test the subjective experience of the monitor. I never FPS cap my games for testing. And two, I use a small utility that displays a gradient from light to dark and then varies the refresh rate. I am working on an update to this utility because the one I found is about four years old and it maxes out at 120 FPS, but it's still been really solid for detecting flicker in monitors where it's present. I am going to change my verbiage when I talk about it going forward because I can't speak for everyone's hardware. So Asus has rolled out something new with this monitor called anti-flicker. This comes in off, medium, or strong. Now, interestingly, I don't get any flicker on this monitor with this set to off, but turning it to medium or strong actually causes flicker on this monitor. But they also rolled this out in a new firmware update to the existing PG278QDM. That's a monitor that does have flicker, and this new mode actually does a great job of clearing that up. This is relatively new. I don't fully understand how it works yet, but it is nice to know that if your copy of a monitor does exhibit flicker, there might be something in there that can help you mitigate some of that. I don't want to spend a lot of time re-explaining everything about OLED in general, so just know we get that same crazy fast greater gray response time here, and here's the motion blur on this panel running 240 hertz versus the Alienware running 360. This monitor does have black frame insertion, but it offers no motion clarity benefit to the 240 hertz experience. I will link another video in the description if you want to know more about that, or maybe I'll drop a short, but there's a lot to unpack about it, and it comes with a ton of sacrifices. So this new MLA Plus panel tech does come into play when we talk about overall brightness. We're seeing just under 261 nits in full screen SDR. That's up from 245 on the PG27 AQDM, even beats out the 251 nits on the Alienware AW2725DF, that's a QD OLED panel. The choice between glossy or matte OLED doesn't affect colors and it doesn't affect factory calibration, but I do want to mention it real quick because this could use some polish in a future firmware. The gamma and white point are both very good, but our Delta ITP is off. We're looking for three or under right here, and we can see a purple tint across the grays due to that lower green value that goes across the range. But to give you an idea of what near perfect looks like, here's the PG27A QDM, and it's just nailed across the board. Like basically every OLED we've seen so far, this does ship in a wide gamut color mode. This gives us 97% of DCI-P3 coverage, where a QD OLED's gonna come in more like 99. Oddly, I'm not seeing this brightness increase from this new MLA Plus panel translate to HDR. We have really impressive tracking values on the console HDR setting, but the peak brightness is 760 nits, and that extends all the way through a 10% window. The reason why that's odd is that on the PG27 AQDM, we get just under 900 nits, and that still extends through a 10% window, so there may be a little firmware tweaking needed here as well. As for the coding choice affecting HDR modes, it's the same story that we saw in SDR. If you're in a very dim or totally dark environment, glossy wins out over matte for enhanced detail. You start adding ambient light to the room, and that difference increases. And again, if you're looking at glossy W OLED versus semi-gloss QD OLED, the same holds true here as well, just to a lesser extent. The advantage QD OLED has in HDR is that it has better color coverage of your BT2020 gamut, but that comes from the tech itself, not the coding. Despite that, for the subjective HDR experience, if I had to pick a winner, I would still give it to glossy W OLED just for its ability to better retain its contrast and its black levels with varying degrees of light in your room. For burn-in, it's the same basic spiel you've heard me say in every OLED video. We've got a three-year warranty here. Burn-in is included. There are a handful of anti-burn-in measurements inside this monitor. 
and I'm getting less and less worried about it as time goes on. I now have two and a half years on my LG CX TV that I use every day for productivity and editing. It easily sees seven to eight hours per day. I'm not careful with it and I don't have any burning yet. Bottom line for me, it goes glossy W OLED, semi-gloss QD OLED, and matte W OLED in that order. But that leaves a big question for me. Will future OLED releases have the option of going glossy or matte or do we just get one? Like the upcoming 480 hertz 27 inch 1440p, I hope it's gonna be glossy. That would be my dream FPS panel. But if it is matte, I'm probably still gonna go for it because I'm gonna prioritize the 480 hertz over the coding choice. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how brands handle this. One thing I can say is that at 699 or 750, this monitor is an easy recommend. I love the price point and it just looks Great. They definitely do still have some tweaking to do on the firmware, but I will give them the benefit of the doubt on that because they've been so good about continually updating the firmware on the PG27 AQDM. The biggest competition for this right now is the Alienware 2725DF, which is currently priced at 829. So you're paying the premium there for 360 hertz versus the 240 hertz on this Asus. I prefer the image quality of the Asus, but I do prefer the speed of the Alienware for certain games. But again, image quality wise, they're very close. If you can nail the environment, either one's a very solid pick. And the environment of your room is probably the biggest thing with OLED. Like I can't use an OLED TV in my living room in our actual apartment because there's so much natural daylight. I would not be able to see that TV every day until the sun went down. So that's it. Glossy W OLED is here and it's really gorgeous, but not so much that you should feel like you need to sell off your matte monitor for loss and just be aware that you're going to have some serious reflections to contend with. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Stay up.